welcome to the Sensational Survival Station, otherwise known as the Hatchet Menu Projects. We hope your taste buds are hungry as you will have the opportunity to try many of our menu items. Much like you would do at a restaurant, you will have the option to choose an appetizer, a main meal, a side, and a dessert. So stay tuned, we'll give you some more information about those. Just like at a restaurant, a lot of times you either order an appetizer or a dessert, because sometimes after you've eaten an appetizer, then you're almost too full for everything else and you haven't saved room for dessert. So while we have four sections on our menu, you're going to end up choosing three different projects. So let's go through these. Your first choices are your appetizers. And we have four things for you to choose from that you will be ordering. I'll go through these and if you have questions, you can email us and let us know. So to get started, you're going to choose from one of these below if you choose an appetizer. The first choice is to write a title for each chapter of the Hatchet novel. Make sure that the title shares the main idea of the chapter because if you've noticed, Hatchet doesn't have any chapter titles. But Gary Paulson just calls them chapter one, chapter two. So could I write, if I choose to do this, could I just put fear? As long as it deals with what's going on in the chapter. So for instance, uh, chapter 16 was a pretty traumatic chapter that we recently read where there was a lot of devastation. The moose hit Brian and the tornado. So maybe you could call it devastation mm. because those two things. You don't want to give too much away in the chapter titles, but you want to at least have it dealing with something about the chapter. Okay, okay? so that's one choice. The second choice is you could use your own watercolors or other media, and that just means um, art supplies, to paint a picture of something that Brian would see under the water of the lake. So you can do this, paint any picture you would like, and then you need to write a brief caption to describe that scene. The third option is you making three illustrations to kind of go along with the book. So when you think of Hatchet, what are the first like three major scenes that stick out to you? Um, with those illustrations, uh, you need to include um, three captions or one caption for each one. So make sure that you're explaining what's going on in your picture, almost kind of like a comic. We don't care if you use markers for that, if you use crayons, if you use even like a digital, um, some sort of art, sketchbook to draw those scenes just so long as they have their caption. Can I just rip out a piece of paper out of a notebook, line paper, squigglies on the side, and just sketch it with a pencil and write a sentence real fast? Well, I mean, Mrs. Leach, this is the final project for a huge unit. I would take more time than that. I would really plan it out, and if you want to do it on paper, that's okay, but I would probably use, like, clean computer paper. The fourth thing that you're going to do is imagine that you are talking to author Gary Poulsen. We want to know what questions are you going to ask him about the book. You need to come up with a list of five to ten questions that you want to ask um, Gary. With that list, we actually want you to comprise it into a letter. So, dear Gary Poulsen, I'm wondering these things about the um, novel Hatchet, yada yada, and sign it from you. And actually, last year we ended up mailing these to Gary Polson because he lives up in Minnesota. Yeah. Those are our appetizers. Ms. Leach, what if I prefer dessert though? Do I have to do any of these? If you would rather eat a dessert or do a dessert project, and we'll get through those in a minute, then no, you do not have to do any of those. Okay. All right, moving on then is our main meal. And just like at a restaurant, the main meal is like the bulk of something. So if you've noticed, these are worth 25 points. Our appetizers were worth 10 points. This is supposed to be twice or two and a half times as much work. Again, we have four different choices for you to choose from, and we'll go over those. You have to choose one of these items. Your first one is to write a short personal narrative in response to one of the following prompts. And this must be a minimum of three paragraphs. So like... Two sentences, two sentences, three sentences? Uh, paragraph needs five sentences. So five times three is 15. So a minimum of 15 sentences. Is there a max amount? <clears throat> nope, you may write 
I wouldn't say as much as you want because we want it all to be finished within a timely matter, but if you need to write a full page or four or five paragraphs, that's okay as well. So do I just get to pick whatever I want to write about? Well, it is a personal narrative, and we're going to learn about this in a writing unit coming up, but personal is about you or about a person, and a narrative is a story. So we have um, a few different choices for you to um, choose from if you would like to write this personal narrative. You do not respond to all of these, you just choose one. So you could describe a time when you learned something about yourself. Maybe you learned how to ride a bike. Maybe you learned how to do multiplication. Okay, something, a time when you learned it. The second one is tell about a time when you were really scared. What happened and how did that experience change you? The third one is describe a time when you felt sorry for yourself. What happened? What did you learn? The next one is tell about a time when you learned something new. Were you successful at first? Did you have to try many times? And why is this something new important to you? Okay, next choice. Brian remembers a teacher giving him great advice. Describe a time when a teacher really made a difference in your life. Another one, write about a time that you made a big mistake. What did you learn from your mistake? Or the last choice, Brian really valued his hatchet. What is your most valuable possession and why is this possession valuable? So remember, if you choose a personal narrative, it's just over one of these. Not all of them, just one, and it's a minimum of three paragraphs, 15 sentences. And if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't like to write, writing's not my style, that's okay because for um, your main, men, or, sorry, main meal, you can always choose from our other three options. Our second option is to create a 3D representation and that is otherwise known as like a diorama. So um, in that, you'll need to model places in the story of Hatchet. So do I want you to just take some grass and throw it in on the bottom and maybe scribble blue marker on the sides? No, we want you to uh, consider <coughs> items like his shelter, the ridge, the lake, the place where Brian found his gut cherries, um, where he saw the moose, etc. Um, and obviously you don't have to use a shoebox. You could use various other materials. Um, we've had kids use um, Legos. We've had kids um, just use like a, a smaller cardboard box. I mean, really the sky's the limit as long as you're showing us a 3D model of his story. We also want to point out that if you choose to do the 3D model, you do not have to tell mom or dad, hey, I need to get to Hobby Lobby or hey, I need to get to Walmart because all of the stuff that you can use with in this is stuff that you could find at home. Um, like I said earlier, grass. Maybe you could use um, some rocks from outside or some twigs from a tree. Um, but nonetheless, we don't want you to just all throw it in. We want you to set it up. Um, and then also with that, just a written explanation of what is shown. So. Here is our, um, here's Brian Shelter, and it includes the rock-shaped, um, help me, the rock-shaped rock ledge, ledge, and then the brush that he used to create the twigs around it. So really, be creative with this. This is a fun one. And one thing I just want to reiterate er, here is, um, if you choose this one, these are supplies you have. So yes, you do not have to tell mom and dad, go buy these but this is something that you need to bring from home if you're going to do this here at school um, or if you're gonna make it at home, that's totally fine. We are not going to provide all of this for you and this is not something you can go running to all the teachers. Do you have hot glue? Do you have yarn? Do you have this? No, this is something we would ask that you. And if you don't, that's okay. Don't choose this one. There's some other options yet as well, okay? The next choice is to create a children's book or a read aloud version of Hatchet. Include drawings and simple words to explain the story to a small child. So just like how, um, you know, Hatchet is a 19 chapter book, you could shorten it into just a few pages of the main parts and you could just put a couple sentences on each page. You could use Google Slides. Um, if you have a different app that you're familiar with, you could do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you wanted to draw it on paper, you could, but um, it's totally up to you. Um, I would make it so that it, just covers the main events of and, the book. And like you're talking to a child. Um, you don't want to use big words and you don't want to put 15 sentences on a page. You maybe want two, three, four sentences and a cool picture to go along with it. Not a black and white picture. That won't really capture a child. The, um, not huge words, not, not things that are above their head. So 
um, just the main veggies. Yeah. Last thing you can do for your main um, dish is to make an ABC book based on the novel hatchet. Each page would have its own letter, so you would have the letter A, and you could put um, arrow, because Brian made an arrow. With that, you need to include one to two sentences and how it relates to the novel hatchet. Um, 26 letters, so 26 pages. And um, again, this is the main section of the project, so this is not something that you want to start on the night before or even two nights before. You really want to take some time and make this look nice. And again, this one you could use Google Slides as well, mm -hmm. or paper, or um, maybe even Google Docs if you wanted, and they all kind of went in order. But Google Slides would probably read more like a, a book, and yeah. each slide could be a different letter. Yeah. Okay. So those are your four choices for main meal. You have to choose at least one of these, or you have to choose one of these. Then we'll move on to sides, and you have to pick one side. Yeah. And sides are a little bit smaller when you think of a meal, so um, <coughs> this is still important. It's required, but it's 15 points, so it's 10 points less than what your main meal is. Um, the first one that you could do is, if you are into music, you could write your own song um, based on the book. You could use like a popular tune, like something that's hip right now. Oh, geez, what's hip? I won't even go there. <laughs> I don't know what's hip. So anyways, you could use a song that's popular right now um, and change the words so that it goes along to Hatchet. Um, otherwise, if you want to write your completely like new, your complete own song or whatever, you're t totally welcome to do that. The next choice is you can select three to four parts of the novel and draw these scenes on a bigger piece of tag board. So we had a choice to draw up above, and those are just three smaller pictures. Tag board is like poster size poster or paper. Now that we do have here at school, and we could provide that for you. Um, a lot of times we'll take a big piece and we'll cut it in half. What you would do then is you would draw three parts, three to four parts, and then at the bottom you would write a short description telling us what this scene is a picture of. The next one is to um, pick just a part of the book and you are going to write a monologue. A monologue is um, where you pretend that you're Brian and or the main character, whoever's in the scene, and you're kind of describing what's in your head. So um, if it was the part of the moose or when the, the moose attacks Brian, I could talk about how I'm so mad that he did this and oh, I'm so annoyed that the moose just went off and ate lily pads and you're kind of almost expressing your inner thoughts. Um, and the exciting part for that is if you're a performer, you get to share your monologue with the class. If I'm a little nervous to speak in front of the class, but I still want to do this one, could I make a video of it? Totally. Okay. All right. <clears throat> the next one, make a collage about Brian's survival experience. You may use magazine cutouts, drawings of your own, real objects such as twigs, feathers, berries, etc. The cool thing about this is um, it can be really anything. You take a piece of paper, um, like normal computer size paper, maybe a little bit bigger construction paper. The big thing is here, no white should be showing. So you should cover it. I have had people do digital ones of this also and just find lots of pictures, images online, but then when they copy and paste them, they all have to overlap so there is no blank space. Um, next, number five, your fifth side that you could choose from is to select one chapter from the novel and write a reader's theater script. So basically, you write a play for that part of the novel on that chapter. The sixth choice is to write another chapter to add to the end of the novel. So some of you might have been a little frustrated with how the novel ends. If you had that opportunity, how would you end it? The chapter could include what Brian is like a year from the end of the novel, or maybe a different type of ending to that novel. And this one, because it's the main, or excuse me, because it's a side and a little bit less, this one should be about two paragraphs, 10 sentences or more. The seventh option is to tell about um, the following two sections um, in another person's point of view. So the first section that we want to hear from is um, you being Brian's mother and describing 10 sentences that drive to the airport. So remember it was really awkward and Brian wasn't talking to her and um, she, she was kind of trying to kind of tell it from the mom's point of view. Is she mad at him? Is she nervous? Is she anxious? Um, and then the other thing we want to know is the second section is to pretend like you're Brian's dad and describe the divorce that's going on because remember the dad doesn't know the secret or anything like that. So say it from his point of view. And the last side choice 
is to imagine that you are the pilot who just found Brian. You are now being interviewed by a television reporter. Write your answers to the following questions in complete sentences. And the questions ask, what did you think when you first saw Brian? What did you expect to find when you heard the emergency signal from the radio? What did you think of Brian's camp? What did you talk about with Brian on the way home? And are you impressed with Brian? Explain that. That wraps up our side choices. Um, last but not least, if you decided I don't want to do the um, appetizer section, I want to do a dessert, that's totally fine. You're going to choose one of these four options. Again, this is worth 10 points. The appetizer is also worth 10, so that's why we can switch them out. Um, the first one is to write an acrostic poem to describe the novel. You will use the word hatchet, and you must use more than one word off each letter. So you could um, hatchet asked to survive in the wilderness, like that. And this is similar to when we did the survival. survival. Yeah. Okay. The second dessert option is to suppose that Brian's story really did get turned into a movie, as it alluded to in the epilogue. Create a movie poster for the film, and then cast actors in the part. So who would play Brian? Who would play his mom? Who would play the pilot? Um, all the characters that were in there, it can be real, famous people. Or maybe it's you and your friends that are going to be the actors and actresses. So you make a, a movie poster. We can provide uh, construction paper or uh, like half sheet of um, take board for you for that. Third option for desserts is to create a book jacket for Hatchet. So you would need to include almost like a new cover for Hatchet um, and then like a rave review. So if you remember um, on Hatchet, if you look, actually it says, on the back, lots of like reviews. So New York Times bestseller and rated number one by the blah, blah, blah company. So lots of reviews. Um, and then a short biography of Gary Paulson. So just a little bit about his life. And you can always go back to our activities to learn a little bit about Gary. And the last dessert choice is to create an imaginary map labeling the locations mentioned in the story, such as the site of the crash, where Brian built his shelter, where he met the moose, maybe where he found the berries or saw the bear, any of the main events that you um, remember reading about could all be labeled on a map. Mm -hmm. And I think for this one, we asked for at least five locations. So, so that's gonna wrap up the menu part. Um, a few important things is this will be shared with you in Google Classroom today. Um, we will take some time next week to work on it in class, so please don't think that you need to get all of this done this weekend. Um, what would we like for them to have done for Monday? I think they should have a plan in place, because we, as your waitresses, will like take your order and we will ask you, what is your appetizer or dessert choice? What is your main meal? What is your um, side choice? And we'll write down those three choices. All of this, if it is digital, can be turned in in Google Classroom all as one assignment so that we see it in one spot. Now, if you've chose something that you need to paint or build, that's fine, we will note that, but we will have an order form. And so by Monday, I would make sure that you know what your three choices are, and then we will give you, as Ms. McAllister said, we will give you class time to work on these. So if you choose something like painting or building, I would bring those supplies with you on Monday. Because the, the worst thing that can happen is you get here Monday and we say, okay, it's your time to work and you sit there and you're bored because mm, I'm going to make a 3D model but my shoebox is at home. So we want you to, to come prepared with a plan for how you're going to spend each of your days working. And I believe we're going to give Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to work on projects. So if you think about it, each class is about 45 minutes. You'll have an hour and a half, three an hour and a half every day for three days. So, gosh, I'm bad at math. As well Four and as, a half. <laughs> as well as possibly the movie being played. Yeah. We'll kind of play it by ear. If we feel that you are moving way fast, then we may have the movie playing while you're working on projects. Yeah, but a good plan for Monday is to make sure that you know <coughs> which three mini projects you want to do and to bring your supplies. And don't come with them all completed. Because yeah. then you sit here for three days. And then we have to nothing. do more work. Then, yes. So, thank you for joining us at the Sensational Survival Station. Please know that we take great pride in our offerings and we aim to please our customers. Upon completion of each course, an instructor will assess your work based on the required elements, graphic pictures, creativity, neatness, appeal, as well as conventions. If you have any questions throughout your visit, 
please do not hesitate to ask.